Matt here with Mobile Solar Consulting. Today we're gonna to show you how to program your inverter remotely using VRM. Then once we do that, we're gonna show you how to minimize the amount of electricity you use from the grid. So if you're paying per kilowatt hour at an RV park, marina, or your house, then this is gonna be a helpful way to reduce the amount of consumption that you are paying for and maximize what you're doing in terms of solar or renewables. So we'll do that using the virtual switch feature inside the MultiPlus. But for now, let's get started with the remote inverter programming in general. So you'll start by just going to vrm.victronenergy.com. Either create an account or log in. Once you've got your account set up and you're seeing your devices, I'm gonna start with my trailer here. You can then, you know, you can see right now we're just floating our batteries from shore power. So by the end of this video, you should see shore being ignored. So I'm gonna go to device list. Um, we're going to have the option here to update the firmware of any of the devices that are connected to the GX device. Serbo or Color Control or Ecrano would, would work for this, but you can update the firmware of your MultiPlus, the firmware of your Link shunt or smart shunt or solar controller, anything that's connected to the servo with a wire. Now to program our inverter, we're gonna click here, remote VE configure. And these things are gonna take a while to load today. So you may have to pause the video and fast forward at some points. We're gonna download our existing settings. Cool, so now that the file has downloaded, we're gonna open it up. And we'll be able to adjust any of the settings on the inverter. But today we're going to look at the virtual switch functions. So at the moment, if you're using any assistance like me, just know you're gonna lose the assistant functionality when you turn on virtual switch because you cannot use both at the same time. So we're set up here to ignore AC input. This I find a little confusing. Virtual switch on means do not ignore. So virtual switch on means grid is on. Virtual switch off means the grid is off. So we're gonna stick with the way it is. So let's now set the conditions. So to set the virtual switch on, meaning to allow grid to charge, we're gonna have the load higher than 2,500 watts. So if you're getting ready to overload your 3,000 watt inverter, you can have the virtual switch kick in and have grid help out. We're also gonna turn grid on if my battery voltage is lower than 24.6 volts. So I've got a 24 volt battery, so that is pretty low, maybe 20, maybe 15% left at that point. To turn virtual switch off, we're gonna set, you know, if the load drops to 1500 watts or if the voltage of the batteries is higher than the float voltage. <clears throat> We're also going to, very important, not allow the virtual switch to kick on and then kick right back off. So maybe your batteries had a heavy load on them, they've reached 24.6 and then they started charging very quickly from grid and quickly reached 27.2. So we, we don't want the grid to just continuously turn on and then after five, 10 minutes, turn right back off and toggle on and off all night. We want to at least make sure, let's just set an hour delay between any, you know, if the grid turns on, keep it on for at least an hour before it turns off. There's plenty of other conditions in here for setting the reasons that it would turn on or off. I'm not gonna go into too much detail with those today, you know, feel free, once you set this up, you're gonna need to play around with this to fine tune it to what you need. You know, uh, you'll want to, you know, uh, play with the low 
turn on voltage and the high turn off voltage and the load size that you want grid to assist with and all those sorts of features. So this is really just an introduction to show you where to find all the settings. So I'm happy with these changes. I'm gonna close the program. It's gonna ask me if I would like to save the changes to the remote file. I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. And now I can upload those same settings to VE Configure remotely. Make sure you select the correct file. You know, if you've got several in here and you're not sure which, look at the date modified and look at your clock. So this is the one we just modified. All right, so this is a good talking point here because the update failed or you know, the setting adjustments failed. This is not something to be concerned about. The error message says the uploaded file does not match the model and or installed firmware version. That's impossible because we just downloaded the file from the inverter. We didn't update the firmware or anything like that. So we're just gonna try it again. This happens all the time. Don't be concerned. Sometimes the second or third time is a charm. Awesome, so that was successful. Now let's go back to our dashboard and see if we are indeed, yeah, so we're ignoring grid right now. Perfect. Something to keep in mind guys is that once you make this change to your inverter settings, we have shore power plugged into our system. If you measured the voltage at the inverter's input terminals, you would see shore power is there and the inverter is not accepting it. If you are not, you know, aware or not remembering that these settings are there, you're gonna think your inverter's broken or that there's something wrong with your shore power wiring or the campgrounds plug. So just maybe make a note of this, put a label on your inverter that you're ignoring AC input or something like that. So you don't uh, scare the other people using your trailer or your boat. Um, aside from that, thanks for watching and if you have ideas for future tech tip videos, drop it in the comments. Thanks.